Well, as I mentioned earlier, Michael Moore raised the capital for his film by running weekly bingo games in Flint. That's one way to break into the movie business, a unique way, I should have thought. But there are other methods, and tonight we follow the fortunes of two groups of filmmakers who found different routes into the screen trade and are now producing and directing pictures. Horror pictures, as it happens, but everyone has to start somewhere. <laughs> happens with a lot of naive people in the film industry, you're sort of messed about and people say, oh well, stick with me, I'll see you're all right. And I just got so fed up one day with uh, one guy who'd been promising me the world with my script that I'd written, that um, I just literally walked out of his office after he kept me waiting for about an hour. And I'd seen an ad in, in AIP and Co saying, uh, we're looking for scripts, we're montage. So I went down literally that very day with the, the script ad in hand and uh, met Jim and Tim. And we've been together now for about three and a half years. We did actually look to, to getting scripts brought in from outsiders, but that didn't work out. So it was decided that between me, Tim and Ross, that we'd actually sit down and write our own scripts. Uh, and for two years, we did just that. Screenplay, I have to say, is everything. It's absolutely everything. And if I had to make an, one overall and overwhelming criticism of the movies I see today, from wherever they, you know, whatever part of the world they emerge, is that you get the sense that the scripts haven't been worked hard enough. They, they haven't been polished, they haven't been refined. Darkness, wind, dry, relentless, fade in, a steel hand appears, jointed fingers pointing skywards, veins intricate web of cables and hydraulic tubing, born of fire. A darker shape emerges, fluttering for a moment like a grounded bat shaping itself from the storm, drawing closer, becoming a figure swathed in the flapping scarf and the ragged duster. And as he approaches, we see the sunlight glisten on his tinted glass goggles. And on the transparent, transparent respirator, respirator, respirator that respirator. protects his face. He glances around and his eyes catch a glint of metal through the gloom. What's interesting about this is that it shows a real care for the visuals of the, of the movie. And on page one of any script, um, what you're looking for is an intention what the writer expects the film to be. Having been given this script, knowing that the writer was also the director, um, also told me a lot about how the film would look in terms of what the director was thinking, which is an advantage. Basically, I've been trying to write a feature film ever since, more, ever since I got kicked out of film school. And I'm touting one around after another. And I've been sort of consistently encountering some one, one fundamental problem to feature them. There'd always be some situation, like when I'd write something set in the Dark Ages, and it would turn out that if you the year before, they'd have three major um, box office disasters in the same genre, and um, historical drama pieces would be suddenly completely dead. The first few people I gave it to just said, yes, we'd like to invest in, in the film. So I knew on that response and also the two or three people who, whose opinions I trust around me, that there was going to be potential for this film. It was like, you know, great scripts, guys, great scripts. But we're not really going to give you a million quid to make your movie because you haven't done anything before. So there comes a point when you say, right, let's look at the finances, look at the bank accounts, and let's see what we can do. Can we get personal loans from banks? I failed, unfortunately. But um, we decided that we'd get money together and just do our own film. It's a way in, uh, is, to be a, is to be a financier. But it is high-risk money. Uh, the, Common wisdom is that about seven out of ten films lose uh, their investor some money. We spent literally, I mean, well over a year looking around hundreds of locations, literally hundreds, and thousands upon thousands of miles all of Britain. But on this film, because the crew is so small, 20 strong crew, everyone, but everyone is mucking in. If a job has to be done, we do it, regardless of what our official job title may be. We've got the farmer here, and they need to run a farm because, you know, it's their livelihood. So we all muck in. I've done rat catching, I've helped mend hedges in the pouring rain, everything. Because of the lack of money, um, we've had to strike a lot of deals in areas which one would not necessarily do on a normal budget. But we've found that people are fully aware of what we're trying to do. 
jump all the way and we just have to cut it where his legs just do. Because people here know what they're doing, but they've never had the opportunity to do it on a film set, as it were. They've had experience in commercials, pop videos, theatre, television. They've never in a movie, and they've always wanted to make movies. It's a horror film, but it's not a nasty film. It's got a baddie, a monster, shall we say. It's a tongue-in-cheek horror film. Yeah, it's fine. Turn over. OK, plenty of eating. Plenty of hand movement. OK, look up. Jump. Cut. I think having the experience of as a film editor is very good um, background for directing. It uh, enables you to know what stuff to, uh, to pick up on and uh, where you can actually cheat by not covering everything wildly. You've got to have determination. You've got to just get stuck in, do it. It's hard work. Uh, you can see the conditions we're working under. Uh, but the results, I think, are well, well worth it. I think that to make a filmmaker at, at whatever level, be it your technician, writer, director, uh, the absolute prerequisite is, an, is a complete passion for the craft. That's when, and then that's followed by the understanding of the craft. Now, that, that type of passion doesn't get deflected by rejection. <laughs> Meanwhile, Richard Stanley is discovering that the money Palace has raised for his film comes with strings attached. We have had to um, turn down a few things and lose a couple of bits and bobs. Most notably, we've had to turn down some of the, um, the killings in the movie. And it does seem pretty much impossible to raise independent backing without at least one or two um, Americans in the lead roles. I hope it didn't hit anybody. That's beautiful. I'll get an I found myself increasingly drawn into the movie. But it's been very satisfying. It's been a very good release of a lot of um, rage, I guess. For most people, it's their first feature. It's a, lot, it's a large amount of chaos, if you can imagine. Um, a large number of people who have um, never really done this before are all um, tripping over the same cable. You shouldn't really come forwards with the hallway. I'm here now. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, for how long? Now and then, mind you, okay? I'm going to take care of you. Everything's going to be... Well, obviously, I have to take 100% um, responsibility for it because it's, it's, I'm directing it and it's my script and my material. So I can't blame it on um, anyone else anymore. So if I screw up, basically, it's... Um, I have to take the fall. Palace Pictures will ensure hardware reaches our cinemas, but Ross and Jim now need a distribution deal if their film is ever to hit the big screen. When we get our cutting copy, we'll then probably go back to the distribution companies that we saw earlier, show them what we've done so far, and hopefully they'll give us uh, pre-sales to actually finish post-production, and then hopefully take it then to the Cannes Festival, if not the American film market, which I think is in February. I would say luck played an extremely huge amount of it. It was sort of um, unbelievable circumstance. A whole, a whole long chain of outrageous coincidences and bizarre accidents, which meant they wound up, they wound up giving this thing to me, which I'm sure if somebody had thought about it very carefully at the beginning, I would probably have tried to avoid doing. There is still a sense that you have to rely on an awful lot on luck or on a sort of commercial nous, which is not necessarily compatible with good filmmaking. On the other hand, and I do, there is a paradox in all of this. On the other hand, if you made it too easy for people to make their first films, I think the net result would be an awful lot of very, very poor quality first films. What will happen if you don't sell your film? It will be sold. But uh, what if it isn't? Um, then we'll uh, try again. This will your grandpa's life. He were a... A good man. Um, I wish them all good luck. <laughs> <laughs>